three things that makes a photograph great. Coming up. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I'm a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into those three things, first I have to say that a good, uh, a term good photograph doesn't actually mean anything. Because it is such a subjective thing. And we might think that a good photograph is sharp and properly exposed, but actually those things have very little to do with a good photograph. Because good photograph is a lot more than just sharpness and proper exposure. But of course, if you are making a portrait of your friend, you might want to deliver a sharp and properly exposed photograph in general. And also, a good photograph can be a totally different photograph for you and for me. Because Let's say that you have a photograph of, of a place that you visited a few years ago and have good memories of it. Then that photograph is really good for you. You have kind of like a personal relation to that photograph. I might not see that. I might just look at that. It's a boring photograph of a famous place. But it doesn't mean that it's a bad photograph because it's good for you. And this whole thing that I'm talking about, being a, a photograph being a good is about your own perspective. It's uh, We might think differently. A good photograph for me is totally different than for you. And it doesn't mean that the photographs are good or bad. That's, that's kind of like obsolete to even to say that. But even though the topic of this video is three things that are in a good photograph. And let's start with the first one. The image has a purpose. If you just go out and photograph without any idea what to photograph or any idea that I will have my eyes open and I will look for these kinds of things and or let's go out to that place and, and make some images of that because it's a nice place or something like that then there is a purpose. Of course a purpose is not uh, the only thing that you need but uh, having a purpose and as I, like I said in the beginning the purpose could be that the image is a great memory for you. You might find an image from your childhood and see and remember the place, you will add a story to it, which I will come a bit later. Well, I actually boiled, uh, spoiled the second one already, but doesn't matter. That image tells you a story, it might bring you back to your childhood, it have, might be some happy memories, and that will make that image really good. I might look at the image and say, hey, some kid playing outdoors, so what? But remember, we're talking about you and your images and what you feel is good or are good. And of course, there might be a wider perspective on this. You might have an image that is good for you and is good for me too. And those images I might call great. If, if the, the whole thing combines into, into one image that I see it as a good image and you can see it as a good image. And then there is of course the act of making the image. That's very important for me because I like to go out walking around with a camera and just make images because I feel good when I'm making images and that's that's something that I, I really enjoy and in that sense all those images that I make during my photo walks on my free time are good in the sense that it made me feel good. I might never show them to anyone. I might edit them a bit just because to see what it is and, and try to recreate the feeling that I had during the image and sometimes I might even I might be feeling a bit sad when I go out and, and photograph and make me make some gloomy images and then a couple of days later when I edit them I might edit them to be more happy and that's that's just the way we are we sometimes we feel blue and sometimes we're we're really happy and of course if that <laughs> difference is quite big it's might not be that good but but when you know you know what I mean subtle changing in our feelings can also make some images feel uh, be good on another day and the other ones the other day. I know, I hope this makes any sense to you. But how about you? Do you enjoy the act of making an image? And how much does it mean that uh, uh, you get good images? Or is, does it even matter what the quality of the image is for you after your photo walk? And the second thing, image has a story. It might be real difficult to tell a story what with one image, but having something of a story inside an image is is really important because that makes the image interesting. You want to go back to that image if 
when it has a story. It, telling, it tells us something. And there was a saying or a quote from an American photographer, Diana Arbus, that says that good images raise more questions than give answers. And I think that's kind of like a core thing of an image. If, if it tells everything, it shows everything, it's most likely very boring. But it, if it is the composition and the light, which are really important parts of a good image too, of course, the technical stuff, if they kind of leave something out, you might leave something in the shadow, you might have a hint of that something's there, you might start wondering what is it, if it's an odd looking place, uh, the viewer might start asking questions about in 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 his or her mind that what what's going on here and start building up stories and that's also a good uh, practice for you to look at other images and start uh, kind of like thinking what what is it all about why was the image taken and and uh, I will talk about storytelling telling a bit more in, in in the end of this video how how that goes but so but that's why an image that has a story in it is very important that makes a good image it's an interesting image how often do you think about story when you make an image? Is, is storytelling something important for you? Please tell me in the comments down below. And before we get into the third one, I will have a fourth thing, or it's more, more or less a task for you. Image is part of a sequence. Like I said, telling a story with only one image can be really hard. And also a one image can be a bit dull. You, you might think that this is no, no good, but that image could be the missing link between two images, or it can be the missing link uh, after one image. It, it might be a really good when it's next to some other images. And that's something really important that you have to remember. And this is also has, has to do with your own body of work. You might uh, have a, a kind of like a general topic what you are making. It can be a subject, it can be a feeling, it can be a color, whatever it is. And having some weaker images in between is not a bad idea because then the stronger images will be lifted up and, and you will have kind of like a rhythm in your in your sequence. Because of course if you have five images not all not all of those images can be great. It's like an a album of, of a music band. There might be some weaker songs, and then there are the songs that are really, really hitting the charts in, in singles market. They, you know, they just go out, go to the top of the charts. But the whole uh, uh, whole record is 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 a good thing. And the same thing is about images. You might have one very strong image, and the next one is not that strong. But that builds up builds up a set of images, and this is something that we are concentrating on our workshop with Matti Sulanto next August. And if you want to have more information about the workshop that is coming up next summer, go to the link, the first link down below. There is the link to our workshop. Here is an image that I took yesterday evening. I like to go out in the evening when it's getting dark and you still have some, might have some detail in the sky and all the neon signs are are up the street lights and you know I, I kind of like that moment of a day to photograph. I think it's the best day or b best part of the day for me to photograph. But this image, well, it's okay, but it's nothing spectacular. But if we add the second image, it starts to make a bit sense. And then the third, fourth, and the fifth, it might make a story. At least it makes a story for me. And it's not something that I necessarily felt deep down, but it was a story that uh, I kind of came up with the with the imagination that I had when I was photographing. I kind of like, it could be a story of someone else. I don't know if you understand what I mean. And I hope this set of images will raise more questions than it gives you answers. That's what I hope. If it does, then I succeeded. I personally like that set of images. I think it's good. And when I say good, in the sense that it's good for me. And I hope it's good for you too. And then the fourth thing, or the task. What is the story that you see in this set of images? Or do you see any story in these images? Because we have to remember that this, when I was talking about the storytelling, we might 
all have a different story for an image or a set of images because we all come from a different background. We have lived, lived different lives, different cultures, we're different age, we have different uh, likes. We, you know what I mean. It's, it's, uh, we're all different and then why we might uh, come up with a different story with, with those images that we make. And that is the beauty of photography because there are no right answers. There are only questions. And that's, I think, is the beauty of photography. And here is a video about getting inspired by doing exercises. Here are some great things that you can, you can do after watching that video. And the second one is my video about the workshop if you want some more information about that. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.